The Power Factor Show with Rick, Steve, and Caleb. Episode 37, Introduction to the Steel Challenge. Gun Rights Radio Network has the best pro-Second Amendment, pro-gun rights podcast available on the net. The podcasts are absolutely free when subscribing using iTunes or Zoom Marketplace. Or if you want, you can just listen from the website. Make sure you visit GunRightsRadio.com to subscribe. Podcasting freedom, one episode at a time. Brought to you by Safariland. Hey guys, welcome back to Gun Nuts Radio. Wait, wait, where am I? Oh, I'm on the Power Factor Show tonight. All right. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Power Factor Show. Once again, I'm not Rick and I'm not Steve. I'm Caleb from GunNuts.net or GunUp.com or CheaperThanDirt.com. Wherever you want me to be from tonight, I'm your guy and I'm here on the Power Factor Show. And tonight, we're talking about Steel Challenge. Now, Steel Challenge is anybody who's familiar with USPSA has probably heard of Steel Challenge because once a year, all the big names in the sport go down to Piru, California, although it's important to note this will be the last year it's going to be in Piru. It's going to be in Florida after this. But anyway, they go to California and they shoot the Steel Challenge. This is the world championship of steel shooting and everybody who's anybody in the shooting sports is there. It's got a big prize purse. It is the fastest shooting sport on the planet. It's like drag racing with freaking guns, and it's so cool, it hurts a little bit. So now let's take a look at Steel Challenge and see why it's so much fun, what you need to go play, and most of all, why you should go do it. So Steel Challenge started, I don't know, back in the 70s uh, when all the other action shooting sports started because, you know what, shooting steel's fun. If you ever stood out on the range and you went to an IDPA match, because IDPA is a big center when it comes to this, I've shot entire IDPA matches that were nothing but cardboard. And you know what? That gets boring. Uh, you get tired of shooting at cardboard after a while. It's funny how the progression goes. You start shooting and you're shooting on an indoor range and you shoot at paper targets and you stand still. Then one day, you know, you have an epiphany and you discover IDPA or USPSA and you go shoot cardboard targets while you run around. And then one day you find, you know, you shoot your first pepper popper and you're like, oh my gosh, it makes noise and it falls over. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. Steel Challenge is a lot like that. The targets are obviously, duh, all steel. So you know when you've hit them. It's extremely straightforward. Uh, every stage is an array of five targets set up at different distances. You shoot each stage uh, five strings and then they throw out your slowest one. So that's kind of cool too. You get a mulligan. Who wouldn't like that? And again, it's just a lot of fun to do. The match that you're actually going to shoot, Steel Challenge, is an official sanctioned thing. There's eight stages. They're always the same eight stages. And our producer is going to do something really cool and put like a diagram of them up here behind me. So imagine there's something cool behind me right now while I talk about this. But you're going to shoot the same eight stages at a sanctioned Steel Challenge match. Now, a lot of local clubs, it's uh, will run club steel matches where they'll have some official stages, you know, so you'll have smoke and hope, you'll have five to go, you'll have accelerator or roundabout or pendulum or outer limits, but they'll maybe throw in one or two fun stages as well that are different from the classic steel challenge stages. So they're not necessarily official steel matches, but they're still the same idea. Shooting from a static position, whacking five steel targets for time, and generally just having a blast. So what we're going to do, we're going to follow kind of the same format that we did with that episode where I talked about Bianchi Cup for hours and hours on end. And we're going to take a look at the equipment divisions first for Steel Challenge and see what you need to compete to go play at Steel Challenge. All right, so here are the divisions of Steel Challenge. I hope you've got, you know, pen and paper to write all of this stuff down because there's like a gazillion of them. You have your open division. Something to remember across all the divisions at Steel Challenge, there's no actual power factor. I think they say on paper that it's 125 or it's USPSA minor, but I've never seen a crony at a Steel Challenge match, and all it has to do, the bullet's got to hit the plate hard enough. Now, these are the actual sanctioned, the actual Steel Challenge World Championship in California and the Nationals and Florida actually use a stop plate timer. So when the round hits the stop plate, that stops your time. Now, uh, most matches just use an audible timer, but the rule for your power factor is the bullet's got to hit that stop plate hard enough that it actually actuates it. So anything making USPSA minor, good to go. So if you've got nine mil loads, you're fine. 
So back to the divisions. You've got your open division. These are uh, an open gun that you have for USPSA will work pretty well as a Steel Challenge open gun. One of the big differences, they're even lighter because the guys want to be able to move them as quick as they can in transition from one target to the next. Uh, STI actually makes a custom open gun for Steel Challenge called the Steel Master. Dave Zavini shoots a Glock 17 that's sort of been like built into this monster of a open gun and it's lightened. It is a lightened Glock shooting open. So the rule of thumb for all of the Steel Challenge divisions, lighter is better because lighter means faster. So you have your open division. Then you have your iron sight division. Iron sight is anything with iron sights. Uh, they say in the rules that any gun that's legal for USPSA Limited is going to be legal for iron sight division. So pretty much party time in iron sights. Again, all nine mils, you see a lot of STIs, uh, you see a lot of single stack nine mils, you'll see Glocks that have been, you know, tricked out. Uh, 17L, it would be, if, if you had a Glock 17L, that would be a pretty cool gun. Uh, if you wanted to take a Lone Wolf, uh, one of their new Timberwolf frames and put a 17L slide on that and, you know, set it up with fiber optics and a bunch of cool whiz bang stuff, that would be a pretty cool limited, or excuse me, iron sight gun for Steel Challenge. Then you have your, you actually have two revolver divisions at Steel Challenge. You have optical revolver, which is an open revolver. So, you know, 38 uh, Smith & Wesson 627. That's the eight shot 38 super end frame with it's ported. You can put an optic on it and do all kinds of cool stuff to it. If you are going to shoot a revolver, at Steel Challenge, get one of the seven or eight shot ones because each string is five shots. That means in a revolver, if you're shooting a six shot gun, you only have the one spare. So get the seven shooter or even the eight shooter. Give yourself a little bit of breathing room. It Honestly, you're, you'll shoot it faster if you try to go five for five on everything, but having that little extra breathing room makes a big psychological difference. Now your other revolver division, iron sight revolver. Pretty straightforward. Factory revolt, you know, iron revolvers with iron sights on them. You can put space age apex barrels on them and super lightweight mass driver hammers and all kinds of cool, neat stuff. Uh, whatever you want to do to it, as long as it's not port it or put an optic on it, is good to go for iron sight revolver division. Uh, just a couple of years ago, they added USPSA production as a division. So if your gun's on the production gun list, it's good to go. Same gun. XDs, Glocks. Uh, SIG 226s, P250s, uh, I could list a lot of production guns, but you get the idea. Production gun, production gun. Now what is neat about Steel Challenge is they actually have a place for IDPA shooters as well. They honor all three of IDPA's semi-auto divisions. So there is an IDPA CDP division, IDPA ESP division, and IDPA SSP division. So custom defensive pistol, you're going to be shooting single stack 1911s in 45 ACP, although if you had a Glock 21 or an m and 45 or a SIG P220, also good to go for CDP. You don't need to wear a concealment garment for any of the IDPA divisions, but you can't use the double layered USPSA style belt. So you've got to have a belt that goes through your trousers, have the gear in close to your body, the same as you would for IDPA, just no concealment garment. And obviously you can carry more mags than you would at an IDPA match, because I can't imagine trying to shoot a steel challenge stage with only three mags. That would be pretty rough. So again, you have CDP, uh, enhanced service pistol. So if you wanna shoot uh, you know, a gun in ESP and in limited or iron sight division, whatever you wanna call it, you could do that. Or you could shoot a gun in SSP and production division if you wanted to double up and shoot two guns. Uh, there's a lot of different opportunities if you feel like shooting the match more than once. It's a lot of fun. There's basically a division for any gun out there. In fact, there's even two rimfire divisions. That's one of the things that makes Steel Challenge one of the easiest sports to get into, aside from the fact that it's pretty easy for almost any range to set up a bank of five steel targets and go to town on them. Uh, there's rimfire. You've got open rimfire, which is anything goes, rimfire guns with ports and comps and you know optics and all that fun stuff, or iron sight rimfire. Go to your local gun shop, buy a Browning Buckmark, and you're ready to go. 
that's all that you know buy six or seven mags so you don't have to constantly reload mags in between each strain because people hate your guts if you do that but honestly super easy to get in between the rimfire divisions the production divisions there is a division for almost every gun you own uh, you can even shoot a revolver in the rimfire divisions apex makes this really cool barrel it looks like a teeny needle attached to the end of your gun and it's super lightweight so if you want to build a whiz bang 10 shot smith and wesson 617 revolver for steel challenge knock your socks off you can do it like i said if you've got a gun steel challenge has a division for you so now that you've got your gun picked out for steel challenge it's time to think about the stages. Like I said, it's all eight stages are always going to be the same. Much like Bianchi Cup, where you can eh, memorize the course of fire, the Steel Challenge stages at sanctioned matches are always going to be the same eight stages. How each stage works is you're going to have an array of five steel targets. One of these targets will be designated as the stop plate. So for example, on Smoke and Hope, which is the fastest stage at the match, you're going to have two 18 by 24 inch rectangles over here, two more in here, and then your last plate is going to be a 12 inch stop plate. I believe it's 12 inches, but I could be wrong. If the diagram says something other than 12, believe it, not me. And how that works is you shoot all four plates that are not the stop plate first, and then shoot the stop plate really couldn't get any simpler. If you shoot a plate, uh, if you shoot the stop plate before you shoot one of the other plates, so say, you know, I go crazy and I go one, two, three, mic, and then shoot the stop plate, I'm gonna get an extra three second penalty added onto my time for missing that plate. Now that may not seem like a lot to you, but when the average time on Smoke and Hope is like two and a half seconds, three seconds is a lot of time to add on to it. How the scoring works is very simple. Your time, your score. After you shoot five strings on each stage, they take the slowest one. So if I shoot Smoke and Hope, you know, five times and I have one where my gun jams or something like that, you know, it explodes and I have to get a replacement gun and I've got 28 seconds, they're going to throw that one out. More realistically, the best way to do it is to shoot four really consistently fast runs and save your fifth run to go crazy. Now, and you know, go as fast as you can. However, what usually happens if you're like me, is you'll shoot three really fast, consistent runs and think, oh man, I got three really good runs. All right, here we go, number four. And then you'll screw up number four and you'll have to focus again and shoot number five and be a little bit more cautious than you'd want to. If you're like me, the one thing that's messed me up the most at Steel Challenge matches is just that. I'll shoot three really good strings of fire, get inside my head and be like, oh man, I'm ready to go, shoot number four and screw that one up. So then I'll have to dial it back in focus to shoot a good string on number five because I don't want to have two really slow strings. Steel Challenge is very much a mental game. You've got eight stages spread out over the course of an entire day or two days, depending on how you're shooting it. It's really easy to get inside your head and start thinking about your times. Unlike USPSA where, you know, you shoot the course and, you know, you're like, awesome, I shot that in 12 and a half and I had, you know, good number of alphas and a couple of Charlies and one Delta, but you don't really, well, I guess some people do. I don't, you know, check my scorecards and do my hit factor and try to see where I'm doing through the middle of the match because that's that seems a lot like math and I don't like math very much. So I avoid that at USPSA matches, but it's still challenge. It's pretty easy because you're like, oh, well, that was a 2.5, that was a 2.7. It's easy to add those numbers up in your head and try to keep track of where you are. And I promise you, you that if you try to do that, if your mindset is at all like mine, you'll screw yourself over and you won't be able to focus anymore. So don't do that. Mental game, all you have to worry about is your front sight and your trigger pull. Now, one of the things about Steel Challenge that's very interesting, and in later episodes, we're going to have two uh, local Steel Challenge experts. Mike Galleon uh, is a local rimfire shooter and has this wacky custom rimfire gun that's got a barrel the size of my arm, and he holds it upside down and I mean it's crazy I, it works for him I don't know how he does it but it works for him and James Austin who's another local shooter uh, he just won area one down in Oregon and uh, uh, he actually finished let me think about this 
I finished fifth at the Washington State Steel Challenge Championship, having not shot it for two straight years and then just picking up my limited gun and seeing, you know, okay, we'll give this a shot. He finished second. The only guy that beat him in limited division is some guy named Pat Kelly. Maybe you've heard of him, three gun shooter. Also my teammate on Team Cheaper Than Dirt. So great guy. To, if, if I'm gonna lose to somebody, losing to one of my teammates from gunup.com and one of my teammates from Team Cheaper Than Dirt, I can be okay with that. Now, one of the things about Steel Challenge that is probably the best thing, and again, we talk about it a lot. Oh, Steel's really newbie friendly, blah, 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 blah. Well, why? Well, again, we have the Rimfire Division. You don't have to draw from a holster in Rimfire Division. Everything starts down here from the low ready. So it's, you know, shooter ready, standby, beep. Just bring the gun up and start shooting. But also because, again, unlike Paper Target, Steel tells you when you've hit it. Uh, if you read Brian Enos's book about practical shooting, he'll tell you that you know you should be at a level where you can call your shots and you don't have to hear the steel ring to know that you hit it because your front sight will tell you to do that. Well, that's great. I can do that about 60% of the time. The other 40% of the time, it's nice to hear the thing go ding so I know that I actually hit it. And I can tell you, if you take a newbie out to the range and you give them a 22, they're not going to know how to call their shots, but they're sure as heck going to know when they hear the target go ding that they hit it. And that makes it a lot of fun. People like feedback. And ultimately, if there was, if there were no other, if I had to pick one shooting sport out of Bianchi Cup, USPSA, uh, IDPA, Steel Challenge, uh, or you know any of the others, I'd probably pick steel shooting or skeet shooting because they give you targets that you actually see blow up or you can hear hit. And human beings love getting uh, auditory or visual feedback from their targets. And there's nothing worse than taking a newbie out to the range, giving them a gun, having them shoot a bunch of holes in a paper target, then they've got to wait for the line to go cold so they can go see how they did, blah, 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 blah. Go steel shooting. Find a steel match near you. Give them a 22. I promise you, you won't regret it. We mentioned earlier that Steel Challenge has eight unique stages. Uh, each of these stages are going to be the same at any sanctioned match. So if you go shoot the U.S. Steel Nationals down at the Shooting Academy in Florida, or if you go shoot the World Championship this year in Piru, which I'll be down there actually getting body bagged by just the greatest GMs in the world, it's always going to be the same eight stages. Now those eight stages are as follows, and they're in no particular order. You'll shoot them in different orders every match, but this will give you an idea of what to expect. The first is accelerator, which again, you're going to see behind me, so I have to imagine you should actually see a cool diagram right now behind my awesome Masterpiece Theater chair. Uh, the next one is five to go. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about five to go off the top of my head. Now, there are some stages that I'll be able to tell you about because I hate them. Outer Limits is unique, that's the third stage, as it has the only uh, still challenge stage that has any kind of movement. You're going to start in box A, shoot your first two targets, move to box B, shoot the last two targets, and then the stop plate. Uh, it also has shots out to, I believe, like 40 yards. It's some ridiculous number. But it sounds really cool when you do it right, because if you do it right, you shoot the long target, and if you call your shot, You'll move over and shoot at your the stop plate before the round hits, so you go boom, boom, ding, ding, and it sounds really cool. It's kind of neat to do.
And then you're going to have Pendulum. Uh, Pendulum has, hey, five steel targets, just like every one of the other stages with the stop plate in the middle. Uh, roundabout is the fifth stage. Uh, I've had problems with roundabout in the past. For whatever reason, there's something about that stage, all the little circular plates, it just kind of screws with me and I struggle with it. Uh, showdown. Are you ready? Stand by. And then Smoke and Hope, we talked about Smoke and Hope earlier. Again, that one is the fast one because you have these big, huge rectangles that you have to shoot at first and they're really close. They're like 10 yards away. So you can just freaking blaze away at them. But I will tell you this about Smoke and Hope, it is possible to miss them. Uh, I, at the Washington State Steel match, I was like, oh, these are so close. I'm just gonna index shoot them. And I yanked my 1911 out of the holster and went bang. And I missed completely, and I have no idea to this day where that bullet went. Goodbye. Uh, and then the last one is speed option. Speed option is unique, and that is the only plate where the stop plate is a rectangle. All the other stop plates are circles. Uh, speed option has a rectangular stop plate. And that owes to its history where it used to be on speed option. The fourth plate, if you shot it, would actually subtract, I believe it was two seconds from your time. So it was a bonus plate and you didn't have and you didn't have to shoot it. But what ended up happening was everybody shot the plate because that two second gain was totally worth it so they just made it the fourth plate part of the course and then you had to shoot it so uh, it's not really an option anymore but it is the only course of fire that has a rectangular stop plate So those are your eight stages at Steel Challenge. Again, those are going to be what you shoot every single time. And we talked about why you should shoot Steel Challenge, who should shoot it, everyone, why it's fun, because it's awesome, and all the other good things about it. And I just really want to drive home that even if you don't have a sanctioned steel match in your area, if you have USPSA clubs, if you have IDPA clubs, look around. I would be willing to bet that one of those clubs is running a steel challenge or a fun steel or some kind of steel type match. Go out and shoot it. Like it's, it's just a ton of fun. And if you get a chance, go shoot steel challenge. Shoot the actual match. Shoot the US Steel Nationals in Florida if you can't make it down to the actual steel challenge and shoot in a national championship. Who knows? Go shoot IDPA ESP division. There may be only 10 guys shooting it and you might finish first or second and take home your very own national championship.
The bottom line though, for me anyways, is it's the easiest sport to get a newbie into. It's a ton of fun. You get to go fast. You don't have to move around too much. So, you know, it's not really a physical sport. You know, it's not going to be one of those ones where somebody who runs faster than somebody else could get an advantage. It's just a lot of fun and you're going to get to pull a lot of triggers and shoot a lot of bullets and have a blast. So if you have questions about Steel Challenge, send us an email, uh, powerfactorshow at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to complain about me constantly dropping my sponsor name, send me an email at caleb at gunnutsradio or gunnutsmedia.com. Helps if I get my own email address right. And for more on the Power Factor Show, you can visit us at powerfactorshow.com or facebook.com slash powerfactorshow. And until next week, I'm Caleb, and eventually we're going to have these other guys back here too.